Hello, beautiful, and welcome to Finding Fertility. I'm your host, Monica Cox from FindingFertility.co, and I created this podcast to help get you to start thinking outside of the box and realize that your infertility might have nothing to do with your lady bits. Rooted in functional medicine and personal experience, Finding Fertility is all about looking at the whole body and finding the root cause of your infertility. Finding Fertility does not diagnose, prescribe, or treat any issues of infertility. But what we do is take a holistic approach and improve your diet and your lifestyle to get you steps closer to creating your dream family. Just by being here with me listening to this podcast, you're already going down the right path to making your dreams come true. Let's do this together. Happy Friday, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Finding Fertility. I'm your host, Monica Cox, and it is my complete honor that you are here becoming the conscious mama you were born to be. Today, we have the second half with the team of Cultivate Fertility. I just love talking to these women, so smart, so educated, so empowered, and I truly hope this is inspiring you to really take um, control of your journey and make your dreams come true. So without further ado, let's get to today's episode. You know, it doesn't take like, you know, years of therapy. Like once like the, it clicks and you put the pieces together, then there can be just like that. That's like the cutting of the cord, right? And then you're free. So I'm always encouraging, you know, my clients to just have a look, you know, just peek under the covers. Mm-hmm. And we find some amazing things, some interesting things. And not only in, in the process of finding about themselves, all, often they find out about their ancestors and about their parents. And there's a, there's a beautiful emotionality like that gets released and, and depth that starts to get, you know, developed. And like, you know, there's more, they become more, they feel more, they're more juicy. And then that's only going to, you know, make them you know, more receptive and ultimately better mothers in the end, right? The more we start to put up those walls and those boundaries, the less accessible we are emotionally and, and, and less vulnerable we are, the less lovable we are, right? And when those souls are coming in, they want a mama that's going to have a big heart, ready to feel all the feels, as we say, right? Yeah. Do you think there's like a wave of uh, soul babies waiting for their mothers to get their shit together because they don't want to deal with it? Like they have like a higher purpose here on earth. And so they don't want the allergies. They don't want the autoimmune issues. They don't want the neurodivergency. And, you know, not that anything is set in stone. Obviously, anything can happen with anyone, but you massively reduce the chances of yourself and your children having issues the more you take care of yourself physically mentally and emotionally do you feel like there's this wave of children that are like uh-uh, we're not we're not coming for the trauma drama dump it mom i mean i don't you know my mind isn't so scientific so i don't think about like actual illnesses and diseases and like specific habits but i do think that there is like a you know there's a kind of a standard right that these babies have that they do have certain expectations and they want their mamas to be, you know, self-aware and empowered and disciplined and taking risks and, you know, stepping into their, their power and being the best versions of themselves that they can be. So whatever that means, yeah, if it's something specific, like, you know, eating, you know, a different diet or something, yes, but really it's more about just being, you know, the best that they can possibly be. They're take, asking them to evolve, right, to step it up to step yeah. up their game, to be more conscious, right? I think yeah. you know, I see it that way, but yeah, yeah. it's probably. Well, because it, we always get the like, well, how can the crackhead have a baby on the side of the street when she takes doesn't take care of herself? But here I am doing everything right and I still can't get pregnant. And it's like, well, let's take a different view from it. What is mm-hmm. that child's life going to be like after it's born? Is mm-hmm. the mom going to clean herself up? You know, like what kind of issues are they going to have as a family, you know? So when you can remove yourself and go, okay, I I want to do better and I'm just going to move forward, get that joy back into my life because I think that's a huge thing missing in most people's journey, especially when you've been in the thick of a fertility journey, like there's no joy left, not even in sex. And 
you know, evolve, like you say, and I believe become the conscious mama you were born to be. I can, you know, yeah. honestly say I would have been divorced. I would have been a divorced mom if I got pregnant at 27. Um, I just had a bunch of stuff I needed to take care of during my journey and, you know, still am. <laughs> but I think if it would have happened a lot sooner, I just wouldn't have the consciousness to go like, hey, this is an inside job. This isn't my husband's problem this isn't my kid's fault this isn't their fault this is my fault um, or not my fault but my responsibility and yeah. I'm going to take advantage of it mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. and how and do I you think... think oh go ahead no you go ahead oh I was just going to say um when someone is ready to peek in Pandora's box right mm -hmm. because we have to start feeling those emotions that we've pushed away or put in the cupboard um What's a piece of advice you can give to someone who is maybe feeling those fears? Like, I don't want to, I want to open it, but I don't want to open it. Mm. I do think that, you know, having, having support, you know, it has to be, you have to do it in a safe space. It has to feel like a safe container. So whether that's, you know, your therapist, your coach, your grandma, your best friend, you know, may, hopefully it's your partner. I mean, that would be amazing if it could be that person, right? Someone in your, in your church, or if you have a religious affiliation, like it's really about feeling safe. And when you feel safe, then I think it's okay, but we need, you know, our, our culture, it doesn't, we're not encouraged to do this. We really are encouraged to stuff everything down. So it's kind of hard to, to find the person that's going to encourage you to do that, right? Mm -hmm. so someone like you or someone like me or these guys where we're going to be like, you know, let's get real. Um, I think that find the right person to guide you because it's, it's kind of hard to do it alone because it is scary, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I but definitely, I, I still pay. That, oh, go ahead, Hillary. I just love this concept though, that healing can happen fast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Healing can happen fast. Like, I think that part of the fear is like, it's all just going to take so much time. And I just want to do IVF because like, fuck all that. I, who has time for it? But it's like what Lauren, like it can happen in a, in a, in a snap. And Karen, and I see it when we're doing visits with our patients, right? Like we say something or, or we figure something out and then it's like, boom, you just unlocked something. And I love Lauren used the word juicy. Like we're just trying to get our women juicy. Like this is a, we, we need this juiciness in life. And like when we can remove some of these obstacles that are in our mind and our hearts that we just didn't have enough space for healing for, and we can kind of start healing that like women get juicy again. Mm -hmm. um, so that like not fun or not the fear that some of that just starts to go away. And the woman becomes so much more of a full body woman. And that is who gets pregnant. Not all the time, obviously the crackhead or whatever. That's like such a crazy, you know, it's real. That's real. But, but the juicy, full hearted, laughing, full belly, doing what she wants. And like those things can come fast. Can I talk about the woman who's doing crack who had the baby? Yeah, God bless her soul. I, like I, I have no judgment against her. It's always yeah, the question. Yeah, no, I you totally know. But it's like that. we we hear like a rendition of it, or you know, my sister in law she eats at McDonald's. She's obese. She has no yes. problem. You know, we hear this a lot. Like in yeah. we all do. So I just want to talk about it because I know it's that feeling of it's not fair, but that's that's what like your work does right you this is like the looking into self and figuring out you know what is it about this you know I'm looking at that it's not fair what what did I do wrong I'm this is, I'm being cursed or whatever it is and it's it's like that can be flipped it's all a mindset trick it really is it's like we can view it all and be like oh it's so amazing that nature is so amazing that someone who even takes such bad care of themselves and has so many free radicals and so much damage and just doesn't do anything we know that is good for fertility can get pregnant because I don't know if anyone's looked at the signs of getting pregnant, but like, I cannot believe like so many things have to be in alignment. Right. It's just like so crazy. I don't even know how it ever happens. Right. It's like nuts, totally nuts. 
Um, and so it's sort of that thing of like, wow, you know, if that can happen there, like I'm obviously missing something over here in my own body. There's some block. Yes, it can be energetic. It could, it could be a hidden infection, but we have to find that thing and fix it because your body wants to get pregnant and all of your biology is set to do this, but there's something missing. So that's the sort of take on it. Like, I'm glad that lady can get pregnant because if she can get pregnant, hell yeah, I can get pregnant. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's, always, there's always, you know, there's, there's reasons why we have these experiences, right? Whether you believe that your soul came in and these are the obstacles that you needed to get over to grow, but the lessons are there. And, and one thing I think for the women listening that you can do, that's really, really an easy, easy exercise is whatever that obstacle is for you right now, whatever you are seeing it as, is just sitting down and saying like, how is this obstacle allowing me to grow? What opportunities is this giving me? How can this obstacle help me to evolve? How can this make, make me a better person? How can this make me a better mother? How can this make me a better woman, right? And if you, when you start to look at you know all the challenges in that way as not just obstacles to like knock you down, but opportunities for growth and transformation, you start to have these awarenesses. And, and that's when the, you know, the messages, like the mind starts clicking and you're like, okay, now I got it. I understand. And yes, I can do this. I'm going to learn from this challenge, whatever it is, and I'm going to take it forward and I'm going to step into my power and I'm going to have my freaking baby. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, just like that, lady on crack did right she had something good going for her obviously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right we don't know what happens behind her closed doors no exactly and it's just like stop stop comparing yourself to anyone you know mm. get rid of the expectations of life I feel like that's the thing that messes up the most is our expectations yeah. our timelines that we've put we've designed and we literally made up <laughs> like and a lot of the scientific community has made numbers up in so many aspects of a woman's health um that have no relation to your journey they could be guidelines um and maybe some evidence to say hey you know these numbers don't look great what can we do to improve them um but yeah it's it's so hard when you're in the thick of it when someone says everything happens for a reason I do feel you when you want to punch them in the face I get it um mm -hmm. but it is the choice like for me I feel like it's the choice you make um towards what you're facing and if you want to, whatever meeting you choose to give to it, you know, like there's plenty of women who have had a fertility journey, figured it out and are not like me on social media talking about it. You know, that wasn't their choice, their path, but um, you can make anything what you want it to mean. And I think that's like the secret sauce. Hmm. Yeah. And just questioning the conventional approach to it. Um, too like we can't kind of came into this saying like the medical system has failed you as we all know right um at one point I got to interview my IVF doctor which was so funny because she pulled out my old chart from eons ago it's a paper chart of course this was before we had we did not have AMH oh we were so far from that right so far from AMH so she pulls out the medical chart I'm like wow you found that thing where is that thing been so she pulls it out and she's like whoa look at this you only got you know I was 29. I only had like four or five follicles come, you know, like they, they get these eggs, it's like four or five. One of the ovaries didn't even give any zero. The left side's a zero for, for eggs, you know? And she's, she's like, you know, that's, a, that's amazing that we got this baby out of this. This is totally amazing, you know? And, uh, and she's like, and the grit, they did grade. And I was like, I was failing out of school with the grading of those eggs. And uh, I'm like, you know, I had a baby 13 months later, totally naturally, like without you people. And she was like, what? She was like shocked by this. She's like, oh my, I can't even believe it. And then, and then I'm like, you know, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm like 45 and I guarantee I have better egg quality now. Oh than I yeah. Do. And I think she almost fell off her seat, but don't you all believe it? Like, I'm Absolutely. like, I for 100% my egg quality now is better than it was then. Like this, like whatever time later, it's just a different way of looking at things and like knowing that you, you can do really concrete things to make your odds better of getting the baby. And, and I hope people hear that message. So a little bit conspiracy, <laughs> but why is there, right? We, 
I don't follow them. They sometimes pop up on my social media, but you've got some really quote unquote famous popular OBGYNs in the fertility space still screaming from the rooftop that age is the number one factor in fertility. Why? And for me, like, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, right? Uh, to be honest, I'm not even scientific. Like all this stuff is way above my pay grade, but I figured it out. I live it. I can do it. So why aren't the people who can take the, you know, imp cats and pass them with flying colors, why can't they see the common sense in the human body that it is naturally designed to be a healing machine and it all comes down to cells because that's what we're made of? why think, are we still ingrained in this like, as a society biological age or is it your actual I, number of years you've lived your life like that's a big difference right well they don't go by biological age do they even know that's a thing they should that's get the problem, like, right? that's the conspiracy think, theory i'm like i think when you're a doctor look you do see there are there is a difference in the machinery i always talk about the machinery the machine starts to be less badass when you're young just think about it as like this is a kind of grotesque example but certainly I bring it <laughs> when you when you started drinking I mean I started drinking when I was young like I could drink a bottle of champagne to pre-party and be like I'm I'm good you know now I have two glasses I have hot flashes and I can't like I wake up in the morning and I'm not totally not fuzzy because my machinery is not as good as it was then and it's hard, like, if you see a young woman get pregnant, like a 17-year-old get pregnant, and you, I had, I, I live in a county where that's not often my patient population, but I had one. She got pregnant. She had the baby. Her boobs were, like, so outrageously full of milk. She could have nursed for, like, seven people, you know, and, like, she was literally fitting back into her jeans two weeks later. That's, her machinery was so badass. It didn't even matter what her mindset was. She, yeah. It didn't it's like, it, it was, it was fine. Like, and so when you've been around walking the planet for a long time, longer time, taking on toxicity, taking on spiritual heartbreak, taking on trauma, taking on um, heavy metals, being around birth control pills in the water, being around microplastics, like whatever it is, the machinery is not as op operational. And so when they're looking at data, they're looking at a massive group of women that aren't necessary. You always have to know that you can be on the absolute better side of a bell curve by changing your epigenetics, by looking at like, how can I clean up my machinery? How can I detox my machinery? How can I make things hum and buzz more? How can I expand my vibration? You do acupuncture in a field and you can change it. You can grow a field. You connect to an angel and your field grows. Like you, you, you can change these things. They're not looking at that. So it it is a part of it that a 40-year-old woman has to work a little harder on cleaning up her machinery, but it is still fully possible to heal and create cellular change and have healthier soup that you're that you're living in, right? Yeah, I mean absolutely. Go ahead. If you're listening to this podcast, you're not in the Oh no. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already, yeah. right. You're just not like take the all your listeners and do the stats on them. A lot of them are getting pregnant when they're in their forties. Yeah. Well, I'm. My thing is, is why hasn't that medical system caught up, right? Because it's not hidden knowledge. It's not like we're talking about this in the dark, right? It's not a secret society that we have these like you know magic things. Why is it so ingrained that we're not budging, even though the evidence on maybe even their side is that it's getting worse and it's getting worse for our children and our children's children? You know, what do you think if, you know, because maybe you see it a little bit more. In, I mean, I know you're not in that field, but maybe you have colleagues or family members. Like, what do you think it is that keeps people so stuck and ingrained in that way of thinking of like, well, I can't change anything. You know, like I have my dad, he's like 65. He's got prostate cancer stage eight. He's like, well, I'm just old. I'm like, dude, you're 65. Like, that's not old. <laughs> you know, like, what is it? 
you know, it, this it's the freaking patriarchy, dude. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know what else. What's sure. the other word? Right. Like, it's like the drug companies and the research that's being done. The research is being done on like just like blanket, like every woman. They're not doing research. We, I mean, we don't have the funding. Nobody's gonna like pay to like research our clients. Like, why? What are they gonna sell them? Like, you know, green, you know, kale or something, <laughs> right? Like, and well, do you think? I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, the reality is we do have a lot of the things we do with people and individuals has really good clinical data to back it up at this point. Like we know we can change egg quality. We know these nutrients are working for sperm quality. We know all this stuff. I mean, we have like nutrients that can help you with your implantation. We've got all kinds of stuff. Um, the problem is it takes 20 years from those clinical research trials to make it into clinical practice. So mm-hmm. us practitioners, you know, we're, we're like going to all these fertility conferences and doing all the research in fertility. My inbox is like microbiome and fertility all day long right now. It's, it's like, you just need to work with somebody who's totally on top of the data and ahead of it. You know what I mean? Who's asking the next question. That's what it's about. And it's, it's like finding that information. It is out there. It's just not in the general mainstream medical. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. It's to coming, watch. Though, like what's what the research yeah. that's being shown now versus the research that we were shown when we were in medical school is next level different. Yeah. So it's coming, it's evolving. People are, we're getting there. Except women, women are just, there's still problems here. I, like I recently had an EKG. You guys, anyone had an EKG? You know, it's like the first thing they do when they look at your heart for something. And I go in and the woman's like, oh, your EKG is all over the place. This is the cardiologist. I'm like, what do you mean? Uh, there's nothing wrong with my heart. What's wrong? And she's like, she's like, oh, don't worry. People like of your build, you know, um, it just doesn't work. So I'm not going to be surprised when we go to the echo and it's totally normal. I'm not really suspecting anything's wrong. I'm like, well, I know nothing's wrong. So like, why are we doing EKGs on women that it doesn't work on and we can't rely on it? I'm so confused right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. All right. So you have you're in the thick of your fertility journey. You're listening to this podcast. You show up to your summits that are happening in May and you're feeling empowered. And then all of a sudden, a month later, you're disempowered. What is your top advice for them to relight that candle? Uh, My advice is to give yourself some time to heal. And like kind of lean into like everything has its cycle, just like, you know, we follow the cycle of the moon, we follow the cycle of the sun. And sometimes we're going to go through these waves where we feel super empowered. And then it's kind of natural maybe to come down a little bit. So just nourish yourself, pamper yourself, give yourself a little bit of time and then be like, on this day, I'm going to step back into my power and then just start ramping it back up again. But know that, you know, we as women, our body mind and spirit we go through the wave cycle right yeah it's okay absolutely it's like a ocean roller coaster (laughs) i always have a list we have our i have our patient my our patients a lot make a list of things that make you happy and Mm -hmm. things you know that, that don't and we're trying to get those out of their lives a little bit but like have a reminder somewhere. I have a lot of times if I'm going through something, I put something on my refrigerator, like you love music, just to remind myself, oh my God, when I'm in my kitchen, I could could just be listening to music. Mm -hmm. And that alone will help shift my field because I love music. Yeah, And I start to dance and then I'm listening to the lyrics and I'm now in art and I'm in somebody else's sphere pouring art into me. And so my problem is further away. And like- it, 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 you know, like we get to reach for a better feeling thought and we get to reach for a higher vibration when we're ready. Sometimes we can't remember what that is. So like have it around, do the work when you feel amazing to remember what it is that helps you feel amazing. So that when you don't feel, when you need help, you know where to go and you're not like <laughs> left to your not feeling good devices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. Like Kara, Kara, do you have anything to add to that? No. Yeah, it's it's find your joy, right? 
I mean, fertility is a byproduct of, of life. And um, I feel like if you start living life, fertility will come, it will bloom and it will seem to be quicker. Like you get time back because you're not so hyper-focused on that area. Um, it's been such a pleasure connecting with you ladies. I always enjoy it. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming on. All of your social media links are down in the show notes and you guys are doing another amazing summit in May. So there's links down there to uh, join that as well. So thank you once again for coming on. Love it. Thank, thank you. you so much for having, you us. for having us. We'll see you in the summit. Thank you once again for tuning in to the Finding Fertility podcast. If you're loving this podcast, please leave us a rating and review and let us know how this podcast is supporting you to get steps closer to creating your dream family. I hope you have a beautiful weekend and we will see you next Friday for another episode of the Finding Fertility podcast.